Have you ever had a conversation with another photographer that goes something like this? Hey, I love that photo you just got. What camera did you take it with? Oh, that was my Pentax K1. Oh, Pentax cameras are not very good. No wonder that picture sucked. But I thought you just said you liked the photo. Just so you're aware, Sony is way better than Pentax. The colors just look way better and the cameras are way better. After having one of these insightful conversations and feeling a little self-conscious about my camera buying decisions, I decided I needed to end this once and for all. No, not by ignoring the photography gatekeepers of the world and just taking beautiful photos. I mean by going out there and factually proving that my camera is better than yours. <laughs> I don't ever actually get that mad about anything. So I researched my camera specs side by side with the top end Sony's and other cameras of the world to see if I could find any little bit of data that I could throw back at these haters. And that's when I found this out for the first time. Turns out pretty much all camera sensors are made by Sony. Before you throw your camera out, realizing it's not as special as you might think, in doing all this research, I did figure out what makes your camera special, and I think you need to hear it. But as always, first, the nerdy stuff, because this gets really interesting. Grab whatever camera you're shooting with right now, and chances are, Sony made the sensor that's inside. This even goes for specialty cameras like Fujifilm and the X-Trans sensors, which from sources I read, is made by Sony as well. Your Google Pixel versus your iPhone, both recently confirmed Sony sensors. And I thought that was the story right there. Sony makes your camera sensor, so you're not special. But in doing further research, it got a lot more complicated than that. Just because Sony manufactures a sensor, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the sensors in cameras are the same. And many cameras use specialty sensors that Sony just happens to make for them. And how much a sensor is factory, what Sony makes, what other cameras are using, and how much of it is that brand putting things into the sensor, or how much of that is software, it's very unclear and hard to get down to all of that exactly. One notable exception though in my research is Canon, who at least for their higher level cameras um, and into the mid range as well, actually do make their own camera sensors. So. so if the sensor in your camera, arguably the most special part of your camera, the thing that makes images look the way they do, if that's not even made by your camera manufacturer, if it's all made by Sony for instance, what does make your camera special? And what makes your photos look the way they do? And how can I prove that my Pentax K1 is better than your Sony? <laughs> can't even say that with a straight face. Let's experiment. Here I have three different cameras that best I can tell use the exact same Sony sensor, the Sony ICX456 8 megapixel 2 over 3rd inch CCD sensor. And that is the Nikon Coolpix 8400, the Samsung Pro 815, and yes, a Sony, the Sony F828. I wanna see if I can take a picture with all these cameras of the exact same subject under the exact same lighting conditions if the picture will still turn out different, thus proving that cameras are unique and special even with the same sensors. And if they do turn out different, why? In order to do that, we need a consistent lighting setup with high color accuracy, and that's where this video sponsor comes in, GVM. GVM makes pro lighting equipment that is easy enough for a new photographer or videographer to use. Here I have the SD300D, which is a powerful 300 watt LED light with a CRI color rating of 97. It's dimmable as well as being able to change the color temperature, which you'll find out later is really important for this experiment. The SD300D can put out an insane amount of light. Right now it's daylight. I have sun coming out of this window here. I got some shades on it as well, but a pretty good amount of sunlight. And I only have to put the light up here at 60 out of 100 to compensate for the daylight coming through. So this light gets bright. If you need a smaller package with many of the same great features, the SD80 is what you want. Check out my description for more details of both and where you can pick up either of these lights. And now the results of shooting all three cameras, the exact same setup, I'm excited. I went through the menu systems on each camera to make sure everything was set on default. I wanted to see if there was any secret sauce a brand throws into a camera. I could have run this test and shot manual everything set to exactly the same settings, and that's an interesting test as well. But since I can't actually control all the variables, I decided to let the camera make most of the decisions for me. This should help bring up a few more factors that can help affect the look of an image. And here are the images. I'm both surprised and also not really surprised that they all look a little different. I'm curious, can you guess which of these came from which camera? Maybe some explanation of the factors that go into how an image looks would give you some clues. In no particular order, here are the things that I noticed. White balance. This is where your camera tries to make objects that appear white to you appear white in your image by adjusting color temperature. 
This is the most common thing I see when people are comparing their cameras to someone else's and wondering why one looks better. And turns out this is something you can control as most cameras, even smartphones, will allow you to manually adjust white balance in the camera or you can do it after the fact. The lens. Did you know that lenses affect color reproduction? Well, they do among other things like contrast in an image. And because lenses are so important in making the final image anyway, I always tell people to pick the right lens and then find some camera to put it on. Color filter array. This is a layer that sits on top of the sensor and in combination with some algorithms determines the color of a pixel. Most cameras nowadays use a Bayer filter array pattern with RGB, but some are different. For example, this Sony F828 has the only production RGBE Bayer color filter array. And CYGM was also popular for a short time. And then you throw in things like Super CCD or X-Trans or heck, even a Foveon sensor, things get really different there. Color space. I'm not even going to try to explain this because it confuses me to this day, but just know that you can save files in your camera to a different color space and doing so will affect how your image gets displayed. This is something people who print professionally know a lot about. Image processing unit. Cameras have a processor that works in combination with the sensor to determine color, and brands use buzzwords for theirs sometimes. We already talked about the algorithms that run here in conjunction with the color filter array being used. Many other things can be done here to tweak colors to a certain preference. This is where I think a lot of brand color science stuff comes from, not necessarily the physical sensor itself. When you look up Leica cameras that were made in conjunction with Panasonic, Leica will often cite color preferences as being one of their special touches, and I guess thereby justifying the price gap for what is otherwise exactly the same camera. Oh, but it does also have that red badge. And there are other factors too I'm sure I'm not even thinking of. If you can think of any I'm missing, let me know. It's been eight years since that photographer dissed my Pentax K1. And if I could sit down with them again, I think, well, first, I wouldn't admit that I made this video or did all this research. <laughs> but I think knowing what I know now, I would just nod my head, say, uh-huh, and just ignore them. I started off trying to prove quantitatively that my Pentax K1 was better than whatever Sony that she was shooting with. But I think I'm now convinced more than ever that it really doesn't matter except for those times where it matters, but otherwise it doesn't. Look, here's what I do know for sure. You're the part that matters. You're the one taking the photograph. I can't tell you how many photographers that inspire me every day that are shooting on all sorts of junk cameras, old cell phones or old digicams like this, or just some old DSLR that they haven't upgraded because why upgrade? There's always gonna be photographers out there that discount your work because of the camera choices you made. But just remember this, there's an inverse relationship between how much someone likes to diss other people's gear and how good their own photographs actually are. Just saying. If you like old digital cameras like these, then check out this video I made. I'll see you over there. And until next time, happy snapping.